Imagine standing on a beach, gazing out over a seemingly tranquil ocean. The air is heavy and warm, the sky tinged with humidity. But far beyond the horizon, a colossal force is brewing, one that can unleash torrents of rain, whip up winds at unimaginable speeds, and change the face of the landscape in a matter of hours. This force is a tropical storm system known around the world by different names, hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones. Although these storms are called by different names, at their core, they are the same meteorological phenomenon. They form under similar conditions, follow similar life cycles, and pose similar threats to life and property. The crucial difference is where they form on our planet and how language and culture have shaped their names. To understand these storms, we must first explore the science behind their formation. Tropical storm systems are born over warm ocean waters, typically when sea surface temperatures rise above 26 degrees Celsius or about 79 degrees Fahrenheit. This warmth fuels evaporation, sending vast amounts of water vapor spiraling upward into the atmosphere. As the vapor rises, it cools and condenses into clouds, releasing latent heat that further energizes the system. The result is a self-reinforcing engine of wind, rain, and rotating clouds. At the heart of every tropical storm lies a low-pressure center, sometimes called the eye of the storm. This is often a calm, clear area, surrounded by the eye wall, the most violent part of the storm, with the fastest winds and heaviest rainfall. Around this center, bands of thunderstorms spiral outward, bringing torrential rains and gusty winds to areas hundreds of miles across. What truly sets these storms apart, however, is their rotation. Thanks to the Coriolis effect, a result of Earth's rotation, these storms spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. This rotation not only shapes the iconic spiral of clouds seen from space, but also drives the winds and rain that make these storms so dangerous. Despite their similarities, the names hurricane, typhoon, and cyclone are not interchangeable. Their usage depends entirely on geography. In the North Atlantic Ocean and the Northeastern Pacific Ocean, these storms are called hurricanes. This is the term most familiar to people in the Americas, especially those living in the United States, the Caribbean, and Central America. Move westward across the Pacific Ocean, and the name changes. In the Northwestern Pacific, affecting countries from the Philippines to Japan and China, the same kind of storm is called a typhoon. Further south, in the Indian Ocean and the South Pacific, these storms are known as cyclones. In regions like India, Bangladesh, Australia, and Madagascar, cyclones are a seasonal threat, often arriving with devastating consequences. The reason for these different names is largely historical. Early explorers, traders, and colonizers gave names to the storms they encountered based on local languages and experiences. Hurricane has its roots in the Taino word huracan, meaning god of the storm. Typhoon likely comes from the Chinese taifung, meaning great wind, or perhaps the Arabic tufan. Cyclone comes from the Greek kaibeklon, meaning moving in a circle. Over time, meteorologists adopted these local terms to describe storms in different parts of the world, and the names stuck. While names vary, the impacts are strikingly similar. When a hurricane, typhoon, or cyclone makes landfall, it can bring catastrophic winds that topple trees and buildings, torrential rains that trigger flash floods and landslides, and storm surges, walls of seawater that inundate coastal communities. The damage can be sudden and severe, leaving entire regions without power, clean water, or shelter. The size and strength of these storms are measured using different scales, depending on the region. In the United States, hurricanes are rated on the Saphir-Simpson scale, which ranks storms from Category 1 to Category 5 based on sustained wind speeds. A Category 1 hurricane has winds of at least 74 miles per hour, while a Category 5 hurricane boasts sustained winds of 157 miles per hour or more. In Asia, typhoons are often classified as severe or super typhoons, depending on their wind speeds. Cyclones in the Indian Ocean and South Pacific are graded by similar regional scales. No matter what they're called it or how they're measured it, 
these storms are among the most powerful natural disasters on Earth. Over the decades, hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones have claimed countless lives and caused so billions of dollars in damage. Famous storms like Hurricane Katrina, Typhoon Haiyan, and Cyclone Idai serve as stark reminders of their destructive potential. But how do these storms behave differently in various regions? The answer lies in local geography, sea temperatures, and atmospheric conditions. For example, hurricanes in the Atlantic often form off the coast of Africa and travel westward, sometimes curving northward along the U.S. east coast. Typhoons in the Pacific tend to form closer to the equator and can strike densely populated countries like the Philippines, Taiwan, and Japan. Cyclones in the Indian Ocean frequently threaten low-lying areas like Bangladesh, where storm surges can inundate vast stretches of land. In some regions, the threat of these storms is compounded by local vulnerabilities. Densely populated coastlines, inadequate infrastructure, and poverty can turn a tropical storm into a humanitarian disaster. But advances in meteorology and early warning systems have helped many countries prepare more effectively, saving lives and minimizing damage. As our climate changes, the behavior of these storms is also shifting. Warmer ocean temperatures provide more energy for storms to grow stronger and more intense. Studies show that while the total number of tropical storms each year may not be increasing, the proportion of the most powerful storms, Category 4 and 5 hurricanes, super typhoons, and severe cyclones, is on the rise. These storms are also dumping more rain, moving more slowly over land, and striking areas that were once considered relatively safe. The science of tropical storms is advancing rapidly. Meteorologists use satellites, aircraft, and computer models to track storm development, predict their paths, and estimate their potential impacts. Satellite imagery reveals the swirling dance of clouds and wind, while hurricane hunter planes fly directly into the storms to measure wind speed, pressure, and humidity. Understanding how and why these storms form is crucial for preparation and response. Communities at risk can reinforce buildings, develop evacuation plans, and educate residents on how to stay safe when a storm approaches. International cooperation ensures that warnings and information cross borders quickly, giving people time to act. Yet, even with the best preparation, the sheer scale of these storms can be overwhelming. The aftermath often brings scenes of destruction, homes flattened, roads washed away, and entire neighborhoods submerged. But it also brings stories of resilience, neighbors helping neighbors, aid convoys delivering supplies, and communities coming together to rebuild. For those living in hurricane, typhoon, or cyclone-prone regions, storm season is a time of vigilance. Families monitor weather reports, stockpile emergency supplies, and prepare for the possibility of evacuation. Scientists and first responders work around the clock to provide the latest information and coordinate relief efforts. Ultimately, the names hurricane, typhoon, and cyclone remind us that, while we may be divided by oceans and continents, we share a common vulnerability to the forces of nature. These storms tell a story of the interconnectedness of our planet's systems, the interplay of air, water, and heat that shapes the world we live in. By understanding the science behind these powerful storms, respecting their destructive potential, and preparing for their arrival, we can protect ourselves and our communities. As climate change continues to influence the intensity of these storms, the need for awareness and action has never been greater. Whether you call it a hurricane, a typhoon, or a cyclone, the message is the same. Stay informed, stay prepared, and stay safe.